Hi everybody, hope you guys are all well. So it's time for episode 3 of Your Wildlife Images Reviewed. Um, and in this episode Mike sent through some of his images that he's captured um, over the past sort of a few weeks. And um, in this particular episode I get Trevor involved and we discuss some of the photos. Some great photographs in there. Um, but yeah, we just basically um, discuss some of the images and just a couple of small things that we would change in those images that were already great images to um, to start off with. But without further ado, here's episode uh, three of your wildlife images reviewed. Hey Mike, how's it going? So thank you so much for sending your photos through. Um, I've included Trevor on this. He's also gonna. Um, give his sort of side of, um, of what he thinks of your, your images. Uh, we had a brief look at the images uh, before this, but um, yeah, let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into it and, uh, and have a look at the images that you presented us um, with. All right, so the first one here, black and white image. Um, quite like the, the look and feel of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, maybe like the, the, the sky in this particular case is, is, is quite bland. So... Um, I mean, ideally, I think if you had more sort of puffy clouds yeah. or something to, it, to make it a little bit more interesting. It does. I always like clean images like this to convert into black and white. I know you've got a few black and whites here. Um, I do like it with a clean sky. Obviously, like what Johan said, if you had a couple of clouds or something, just to add a bit of texture, but not to take away from, um, from your subject being the two giraffes. It's very nicely composed. Um, this is me just nitpicking now. If I had to pretty much what Johan's doing, just maybe crop it slightly tighter um, and maybe even a little bit more of the foreground going forward. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you're going to include that much sky into your, into your image, um, see that's also very nice, yeah. something like that. I mean these are obviously JPEGs now, so they don't, they don't show up um, as well as they would with raw images, Yeah. but um, I don't know what you think, I, I, I think I would actually maybe even go for something like that, not include as much sky. Yeah. Um, Maybe, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a difficult thing. I think this was probably, um, you, you did send me this um, sort of a month or so ago. So usually that sort of, that winter period um, across, Af well, most of the Southern Africa at least, your sky is quite boring and quite bland. So it is difficult to do those sort of animal and yeah. environment type images. Yeah. But um, otherwise, yeah, love the, love the look and, and feel of it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's have a look at the next one. What do you think? Yeah, this one also very nice. Um, it's always tough, obviously, when you're photographing herd animals and you're trying to isolate an individual. Um, once again, I mean, with, with this feedback in that, we are obviously going to be quite critical and quite, uh, we're going to nitpick on um, bits and pieces. Uh, for me, whenever taking a photograph, whether I'm out in the field or I'm, I may not necessarily always think about it, but um, just in terms of editing and composition afterwards, composition is obviously key in, in um, a wildlife image. Um, I always try and look at the edges of my frame just to see if there is anything that is negatively impacting or um, detracting from the image or um, pushing my eye away from the subject. So here, for me, there is two um, areas. Obviously, the elephant on the right-hand side, that's not avoidable just in terms of the way it's composed. I mean, you're not going to really cut it out unless you go really tight in on your subject and then the shadow in the top left-hand side. Yeah, um, I, I agree with, the, with Trevor there totally. And I mean, like he said, it, this is really sort of um, just sort of nitpicking. Um, I would have a look. I'm, I'm not sure what um, sort of what gear you use for this, but maybe just to, to zoom out a little bit more, um, you would have gotten more of the reflection in at the bottom here, and then maybe also more of the, this elephant, and then crop in afterwards. Um, mm. So I would maybe have a look at, uh, particularly this shadow over here, if we maybe just take that out, we're going to lose some of that, Reflection on the front here, but even just something small like that, yeah, makes it's, a big difference. It's just one less thing where your eye sort of um, pulls towards. So, yeah. um, just be mindful of that. Um, and yeah, I mean, we we try and in the field encourage people to, especially with scenes like this, we've got so much going on with herds, with reflections, all of that, to try and include as much of that as possible. Uh, rather zoom out 
Um, and then you can always crop in afterwards. Because I think that's, that's something that we're all guilty of. And I mean, we said on Safari, we've got these big um, telephoto and prime lenses. And we, we often want to be as tight as possible, get the detail, get textures, um, which is not always the case. You know, sometimes, like Johan said, it is nice to pull back a little bit um, and do more of an animal or herd of animals in the environment. Mm. Also, I mean, you can maybe even look at sort of get, keeping it even simpler. I mean, this one here, it's... It's nice to have it there, but it's not really adding to your, your story. For me, the story here is about the elephant drinking and this reflection. So maybe even like going in closer, if we even do like a portrait type image of that. Um, rather just going, eliminating those distractions as well. Just eliminating those, those distractions. Often, like keeping it simple um, is often the, the, the route to, to go with these kind of images. But otherwise, great image. Um, really, really like the look and feel of it. Okay. So nice. Very nice. Um, love the love the eyes that sort of um, you get the glint in the eye. The glint in the eyes. Nice. I think um, if anything, again being super critical now is uh, maybe a little bit harsh on the on the contrast. I'm not sure from an editing point of view if you use the the contrast slider here. Personally, um, and I know a lot of uh, our guys do it. We prefer to sort of use the create contrast. The contrast yeah. Create the contrast with your with your black and white. Um, also, have a look at uh, at your histogram over here. There is still some some detail that you can pull there. Um, I mean, this is obviously going to be like a, a, um, a JPEG image now. But if you go back to your raw file, mm. just have a look and see if you if you work the contrast here, because especially in, like where these black and white areas meet. Um, it is quite harsh with the, the, the blacks. And you've got, you've got such a nice facial expression there. So you don't want to burn those dark areas out and lose that detail and that facial expression. You want to intensify it, if anything. Yeah. If yeah. anything. Exactly. I'm not sure if, if um, pulling down your blacks, if it was to try and sort of bring this area down here, if that is the case, I would rather than maybe go with a, a radial filter. So, yeah. um, I'm not sure if you've used it before but pull it over your, um, your subject and then darken from there. So you darken around your, um, around your subject and not on your subject itself, um, if that makes sense. So also what I did there was I just pressed O for overlay and you can see the red comes up. Um, obviously that whole red area is the area that will be affected by any adjustments that I make with any of these sliders. Yeah. But otherwise, I um, love the, the sort of look in the eyes. Um, very, very cool animals to photograph. Nice love composed as well. Yeah, love little spotted hyenas. Nice. This is very cool. I really Probably my favorite out of, the, out of the images that we have here. Yeah. It's really nice. Lovely, um, nice um, sort of playing with, with slow shutter speeds. And in this particular case, you created an image instead of just taking it. So, um, and it's not always easy to do this. Yeah, this, this is very cool. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything no. to that. That's no. super. Very well done. Also a very nice moment. Mm. Great interaction. Um, I think again, maybe with, with uh, the contrast and also when you, um, when you do your processing, have a look at your, your histogram over here. You see there's quite a room, a, a lot of darks, which is obviously I mean, a lot of it from the soil, but also um, from the lines itself. If you then just go something, even just by pulling the ex total exposure up and then pulling your whites and just stretching that a little bit. Um, you can see you already brought in a lot more detail. Mm. Especially because your focus is obviously the moment between the youngster and the adult. Yeah. Um, but just by lifting the exposure there, you bring out the detail on the face and you, you're preserving the moment, yeah. if that makes sense. So you just, that, that's what you want to highlight in an image. And what you've got to remember is that the human eye is always drawn to the brightest and the sharpest parts of an image. So you've got a bit of white on the cub, you've got white on the adult as well. So you want to preserve that. And that's where you want the viewer's eye or your eye to be pulled straight into. Exactly. Um, and I mean, with, with something like this, now that I've pulled up um, the exposure touch, uh, it, it does have a bit of a, like a, a yellow or like a, maybe like a golden tinge. Yeah. So just have a look at your either your temperature or also from a, a vibrance point of view, just to bring that down a bit, to give it more that natural um, look. Mm. I would even, like, like Trevor mentioned, our eyes are drawn to those bright areas. So you can even look, at, in this particular case, to bring in like a bit of a vignette and just darken the areas around it to focus your viewer's eyes on this, um, 
on this beautiful moment. Yeah. But love that with the Cubs uh, mouth open, the and paw, the the, just the reaction of it. looks like a young male, male actually. Yeah. yeah. So, um, That's why I just went with adults. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I hope I didn't say mom somewhere in there. But, um, but otherwise, yeah, very, very cool image. I would just look at um, those few points that we highlighted yeah. there. Also, very intense moment. That's awesome. That's very nice. Such a cool moment. Very, very nice. Um, I think, again, like we mentioned, have a look at sort of, if you look at the image, have a look where your eyes are going in this particular image. I'm not sure about you, but my eyes go here firstly, but then I sort of start veering off yeah. into that little corner over there. Yeah. So, in terms of composite, it also looks like a nice angle, quite mm. a low angle here. Yeah. Um, the only thing I would really change about it is, I mean, it's such an intense moment, an intense look for, on his face is maybe, like you said, your eye does start to wander off a little bit. Yeah. Um, and all I would do is exactly that, just crop it in a little bit. I mean, you've got such a, such a cool moment there. I mean, th that for me, I mean, you could even go more if you wanted to. Um, really go in close and almost have him fully your frame because you've got that intense uh, yeah. stare with the, the one eye. Because especially with this, I mean, it's that, that's your moment right there. So you've mm. got to think of, in terms of composition, what value are the other areas adding to the image? Is it a wasted space? Can you eliminate that space? Is it adding to, to the image? You know, is there something else going on in the frame? In this case, there isn't. Mm. Um, you want to intensify his stare. Mm. Um, and yeah, so even just something like a slight crop, um, go tighter in on your subject here, makes a massive impact yeah. on the overall image. Well, that's a, that's a powerful image, man. It that's, yeah. It's so cool. You've got you've got that sort of eye contact. Um, I love that uh, position of the of the leg here, yeah, showing that oh, movement, yeah. and also the sort of the dark background, just sort of underexposing it and, and making the your, your subject stand out quite a bit more. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. Mike, that's very well done, man. Those are all the images. Um, really, really cool. Thank you for sending those through. Guys, if you would like to uh, include your images um, in this program, then please email them through to either Trevor or myself. Mm -hmm. We'll leave the email addresses down at the bottom here. Or you can send us a, a DM on Instagram. Also leave it down at the bottom. Send them through anything from 5, 10, 15 images and um, then we will give our take on it. Um, I'd like to include some of the other guys in the office as well over the next coming days. Yeah. But um, yeah, thank you so much for sending that through. And um, yeah, we'll catch you guys soon, hopefully. Yeah. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Cheers.